One of the major preoccupations of the film, The Holy Conspiracy, is our approach to religion in contemporary India or the South Asia in a broader sense. The film features a very interesting character, a scholar, a biblical scholar, rather a scholar of scriptures, who becomes part and parcel of this courtroom drama. Biplob Dashgupto, a very senior actor, a thespian in his own rights, is playing the role of the assistant to the prosecution lawyer in this film. And he has made this journey with the giants of Indian cinema, Shomitra Babu and Mr. Shah. Bibla Babu, it's very uh, interesting to note that having spent a long time in theater and film and other forms of uh, show stage, business, stage, 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 stage of course. Um, how did you approach the, this part? Would you call this a role of a lifetime? Uh, certainly yes, not because of the role itself, but because getting an opportunity with, you know, getting an opportunity to work with two great giants of the world. And uh, Shomitruda, I have of course worked earlier, but definitely getting an opportunity to share the screen space with Nasiruddin Shah is definitely a matter of honor. So that was very, very exciting. And initially, if you remember, the name of the film was Devotar Grash. Mm -hmm. And then it was changed to a holy conspiracy that answers more or less your question that how a scholar, you know, you know, sometimes when he approaches this kind of work, he approaches with all kinds of honesty. Integrity. But, uh, integrity. But gradually, when, you know, the other things, you know, you know he gets to know that actually he has become a part of the trap, then that realization is too late, which happens in this particular case. So I believe that happens with many scholars all over the world who are not, I won't say genuinely dishonest or doesn't have integrity, but sometimes they become victim of the circumstances. So that's what happened in this particular Would you say that the film is also a commentary on the fate of a public intellectual in our times? Yes, it is. Uh, primarily, you've seen the trailer where uh, Boshunto, Reverend Boshunto Chatterjee says, it's a trial of a man talking about Kunal and D'Souza says, a thinking man. So that is the crux of the matter, thinking man, because in our Eastern educational ethos, we are taught right from our childhood, do not argue with your parents, do not argue with your teachers, don't think. Just do what you are told to do. As a result, you know, our self-expressions, they get, you know, hampered and we become inhibited. And we forget to think and we do not exercise that we are entitled and we have the right to think, which is again the subject and also the matter of human rights. And another interesting feature, which I'm a student of literature, I, I found that the story is definitely the basic outline is science and religion. Genesis versus theory of evolution. In fact, the film is based on the 1930s America when McCarthyism was on the spread and there happened to be a Scopes Monkey Trial yes. which formed the basis of this 1955 play and the film called The Inherit the Wind. Now, you were saying about the, the yes, wind yes. that shook. And, and that time, lots of schools were not allowed to teach theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. Later on, Supreme Court, you know, passed judgment. You know, intervened. That should be, yes, intervened. And that has happened. So it is happening for quite some time. But here, the context is slightly different. The first, if you see the trial where Kunal says, I'm a Christian, I was a Christian. I'm not a Hindu, I'm Santal. So I am a part of a culture, not a part of a religion. So not necessarily you will have to be coded or underlined that you belong to this religion. You are a human being first. So that is definitely the crux of the matter of this particular film. And another thing which I think has come out uh, through the film, that how, you know, such a situation where a teacher refuses to teach Bible before theory of evolution gets suspended, gets arrested, and how that situation, you know, that 
the fundamentalists they could take advantage to use for their vested interest. That is another layer and also another layer of the relationship between Reshmi and, and Kunal. How did you approach the role? Your, your background in English literature, your understanding of 19th century Europe and the sweeping changes that took place in the middle decades of 19th century, the Communist Manifesto, Darwinism, how did that understanding help you approach the role? First of all, when I uh, was told by Shoibal the, what the role was all about, then I read the script. And he told me one thing, that you are part of the conspiracy. But that part of the conspiracy does not come out through any incident. It is inbuilt in my role, in my approach to the kind of job I am doing. So what is interesting is that Madhu, the role I am doing, is very clinical. It's not subjective as Reverend Boshanto Choudhury or D'Souza. He's very objective. He has an agenda. When that agenda failed, he leaves the courtroom because the verdict, before the verdict is announced. So that helped me to sort of, when I was doing my part, my objection, whatever, I was doing with all my sincerity. But when I realized that uh, Mashun strategy is going to lose, I just go and say, Stagada Pati Riven. So my <laughs> agenda was clear. So that helped me to sort of uh, depict the role the way it, it should be depicted. And did anything uh, went through your mind while preparing the role? How the scholars in contemporary India, the historians, the scholars of scriptures, how they are leading their existence in our times? Because the film, in very clear terms, speaks about the crisis of a scholar. Yes. Uh, the thing is, uh, First of all, I was a junior of Reverend Boshunto Chatterjee, who is a biblical scholar. And especially where I had no dialogue, there was uh, where D'Souza says, Your Honor, you have rejected all my witnesses. So I'd, I'm not left with anything, anybody else, but I would request a biblical expert to be my witness, without mentioning who that biblical expert was. And the judge says, yes, permission granted, I'd like to have Reverend Chatterjee to be on the witness box. And the judge says, I've never heard that prosecution is asked to testify. And uh, Reverend Chatterjee says, I have no problem because it's, it's, it's something to deal with Bible. And the way, is, I think it, though I don't have any dialogue, but I'm listening. Reverend Chatterjee, if I say that you are an expert on Bible, would it be wrong? How did the people of Bible procreate? the way we do. So that means the man used to adopt a biological process to make women conceive, which he called sex. What is that? Sex is the way Nasidji pronounces that word, which hits Reverend Chatterjee. So I'm observing that. So I'm seeing in front of my eyes how a scholar is crumbling and he is helpless. That helplessness maybe is not affecting me emotionally for the role, but definitely as an individual, it is affecting me as a scholar of or other a student of literature or an actor. And also as a student of acting, uh, it was, I believe, it's a master class in both film acting and theatrical acting as it well. It is. I would like to cite an example from a series called The Komensky Method, Michael Douglas and Morgan Freeman. There was one sequence where Morgan Freeman was there only for one episode. And uh, Michael Douglas's daughter told her father that you're old, you cannot carry on such a heavy strenuous exercise. So we need somebody, you know, celebrity teachers from outside uh, our periphery to teach. So Morgan Freeman comes and he says that uh, you're very lucky that you have got a teacher like Kaminsky, Michael Douglas. Uh, but only his teaching is not enough if you really want to work in Hollywood because you must know how to appoint an agent, how to deal with an agent and this and that. And Michael, then I will take a master class. Michael Douglas says, no, you won't take a master class. Master class will be taken by me. You will only take class. Well, no, 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 master. And they start arguing. The one of the students says, and it continues for some time, sir, since both of you are here, two great giants, 
why don't you do something so that we are able to watch and learn? Michael Douglas said that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> so that's what I, you know, experienced seeing two titans fighting in front of me because I had personal interaction during the shooting with Nasidji. I asked him, you Nasidji, you are because we are theater people. We are used to projecting our voice. And the way you said, Pravin uh, Chachi, if I said you are by expert on Bible, it would be wrong. So you are maintaining a, a decibel level which is inaudible. During dubbing, will you do the same thing? Well, of course. I have no right to cheat my co-actor because my co-actor is giving reaction on the basis of the decibel level I am using here. So that's a learning. And what Omrita also said that I knew that this would happen. I told Shoibal, the Shoibal, you are taking a sequence. There is a interrogation, interrogation uh, kind of cross-examination with Kunal. I have a separate where Nasiji is not there. I said, will you take Nasiji's reaction on this? Well, yes. I said, please don't ask your assistant to give cue. I'll give cue. Okay. Because I knew that Nasiji would appreciate that because Nasiji put cue to his co-actors. And he said, Jam, thank you for giving me the cue. So these are certain things, you know, I really never ever experienced in my uh, a few international films, Shadows of Time, Candle in the Dark, I did Raja Ramon Roy. Of course, I learned other things, but working with Nasiju, I think that he's perhaps the best actor on Indian screen. So that was thanks to Shoibal that I got this opportunity for him. How would you ask the people to come and watch the film? What would be your appropriate words? You see, first of all, I cannot ask them to watch in a particular way, but first of all, I personally feel that after many, many years, you know, I have seen the film. After many, many years, we are going to watch a film which will provide you a lot of food for thought. So that is very important in today's world because we are living in such a time where we need to think, we need to express because Tolstoy said, ignorance of people is an advantage to the government. The less we think, the more it is better for the people who exploit. So we need to think and this film will provide you a lot of food for thought apart from brilliant performances of two iconic actors of the world of all times. So if you don't watch it, it is your loss, not the film's loss. Like the word said by the famous philosopher, I think therefore I am. Yes. Whether we are living with the thinking cap on is a question that the film will arouse in you when you approach it in the theatres. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank Same you. Same here. Thank you. Your Honour, I hold that the right to think is very much on trial. A man is on trial. A thinking man.